Andrew Jackson was an Oscar nominee for Mad Max Fury Road and an Oscar winner for Tenant. And other projects have included Dunkirk and The King. And he's here to discuss the blockbuster hit Oppenheimer. Uh, similar to Pablo, before you, you've worked with your, your film, like Christopher Nolan, multiple times uh, before. And in terms of Oppenheimer, I guess, like for you, what were like the first conversations with him about, about how you wanted to approach this project? Um, so the first conversation, I think Chris called me and said he had a project, a script that he wanted me to read. And it was going to be a bit of a challenge because he really, for this script in particular, he really wanted all of the effects to be um, filmed uh, based on filmed elements. And and that's that's kind of always a, a priority for him. But on this film, it was more like an absolute rule. Like we didn't want to have anything that was not based on at least um, some sort of photographic input. So um, I read the script and we talked a little bit about the ideas and um, and how to approach it. And, you know, there's, I guess there's essentially two parts to the film. There's the imaginations and ideas that are going on in Oppenheimer's head during his early life, um, which which were a challenge in themselves because they, they're not described exactly on the page of the script what what that looks like and and really Chris's challenge to me was to come up with something to represent those thoughts and ideas that was um, both kind of visually engaging and related to the script and also was possible to build something and film it and and so that that sort of um, that process consumed quite a quite a reasonable um bit of time and the head of the shoot or actually started a couple of months before pre-production and, and spent a lot of time with Scott Fisher, the special effects supervisor in his shop in LA, just building and experimenting with ideas. I come from a from a practical effects background. So I was it was quite a fantastic experience for me to go step back into the workshop world again I, I it's been a, a while since I've I've sort of lived in that um, workshop environment but um, it's a little bit like um, you know it doesn't change as much as as the the computer world that we're more familiar with now where everything's changing all the time and the workshop was pretty much the same as it was you know 10 20 years ago so that was great experience for me and working with Chris with um, Scott and his guys in that shop and we'd, we'd shoot a whole lot of different ideas and show them to Chris and we'd, we'd kind of discuss how um, how the the things that we'd done worked for him and, and things that were successful we'd develop further, other ideas that, you know, maybe weren't so appropriate or he didn't feel were quite right for film, we'd, we'd kind of drop those. So really a huge amount of the work was that um, process of arriving at what it was we were going to film um, rather than knowing exactly that we had to reproduce this or that or whatever. So that's kind of one section of the film. The other fairly major one was that this is a film about a nuclear bomb. So clearly that's um, a challenge in itself. Um, but Scott Fisher and I have worked together on three movies now for Chris and we both knew that whatever we did, it was going to have to be as practical as possible. And I think we were both fairly confident that if we made a big enough explosion, we would be able to um, manipulate that in a way to make it feel much bigger. And we we basically did pretty straightforward things of slowing it down, shooting at high speed. Well, first of all, we made the biggest explosion we could. And and you know, being in New Mexico in the desert, there's nothing around. I mean, we could we could really um, let that be a fairly significant component. And shooting at high frame rates, and and then further retiming and layering, and and adding extra elements of retimed sections to add detail when we were close up. And we also shot a whole lot of um, like shockwave elements and cloud tank columns, and we were compositing those. So some of the some of the more complex explosion, like the um, the te the Trinity test shots, were ended up being a whole lot of um, layers of of um, elements that were all filmed. Um, we we had the advantage of the original Trinity test being shot at night, so all of the um, archival footage that we were 
using as reference is it's essentially self-illuminating so it doesn't it's really quite constrained to that quite a small kind of area that's only the 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 bomb and the cloud um, column itself that's lit and then it, it quite quickly sort of dissipates and turns back to night and you know we did a lot of um comparing to the archival footage although we weren't ever trying to exactly reproduce it it was kind of in a in a more i suppose slightly in the in the same vein as the as the um the other work that was relating to his thoughts and ideas it was a, a sort of artistic slightly more artistic interpretation of of the actual footage yeah i was going to ask you about that because i was like i think probably everyone knows or at least has an image of what a nuclear explosion looks like right like I've seen it so many times in media and this i'm like like you said like it's not it is like more of like it's obviously like you know what i mean it's like obvious that you're watching the, like this trinity test and like this is like a nuclear explosion at, at least as a viewer you're like yes but it doesn't look like it looks like totally original I, I just found that like fascinating the way it looks the way you guys were able to do that and while still affecting the same feeling that you would get seeing in new, like um, the mushroom cloud and the whole like typical thing that we've seen in like countless media since it happened basically so i was like really i just thought that was like an incredible like i don't even like sleight of hand or i don't even know what i would call it i just thought that was like so good yeah, I mean, we have obviously talked a lot about this whole issue of the um, the idea that he wanted to be photographic or based on photographic elements. And I think probably one of the issues that we were dealing with or what people have, have been dealing with is that we're all, as you say, familiar with seeing footage of nuclear tests. But most of what comes to people's minds is much later tests that were like way, way bigger and in daytime and they go on forever and you see the whole thing like climbing into the stratosphere well the trinity test as i said was um at night so really it's kind of constrained by that um how much of it you can see is it was really itself illumination and and you know we as i said we we did sort of side by side comparisons with the original trinity tests and um i think with all of the um the retiming and layering we we got really very close to that but you know the the idea that um of using photographic elements i mean we everything we do is is you know textured with photographs so really a, a huge amount of the work that we all do is used is based on photography at some point somewhere and and i always think that you know if your ultimate test of um of good cg is that it looks photographic well you know starting with photographs or photographic material you're already halfway there so it's um and it's you know to be fair i guess it's um chris nolan's the artist and and film is the medium that he's chosen to work in and that's the way he wants his work to be done and so it's not for us to kind of question that it's just to you know to execute his his artistic vision and actually yeah. i would i would also say that you know a lot of the work that um that we do for him even without that directive from him i would do it the same way i mean i've always i've always started any sort of effects the work that i you know you're looking for inspiration you're looking for ways of making things interesting and exciting and novel i'll always start by shooting something you know i, I suppose i guess partly because i come from that sort of practical background um, I'm very comfortable in that space. So I'll I'll put little tests together that are specific for the particular show that I'm working on and film a whole lot of stuff. And it's super quick. I hate spending too much time getting kind of bogged down in tests, but you know, like put really fast little tests together, film them. And you know, the uh, even on a show where you know ultimately that's going to end up being a CG effect, you're starting with some practical real world reference or or even more than reference it's kind of like a design process i guess in a way like rather than trying to sp specifically design exactly how things work if you can um film something real that relates to the subject matter that you're trying to do then then it'll give you all that for free and you can shoot a whole lot of different ones very quickly and um so that that's um very much the process on on chris's films especially yeah uh, it's it's incredible work. Andrew Jackson, we have to wrap up here, but the, the film is Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan's blockbuster film. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you.